Hi again and welcome back. This month we're going to be talking about online reputation and specifically, well, it's darker side. So um, as much as I don't like to be a fear monger, let me lead off with this question. What are you willing to risk for a positive reputation on the web? Uh, let's think about these things. Are you willing to risk a federal trade violation? Right? Getting federal charges or a federal fine for engaging in practices that violate the federal guidelines. Are you willing to risk being banned by Google and having reviews or your online local listings taken down? Would you be willing to risk violating society guidelines and potentially being called to task for misleading or deceiving patients? And let's be clear, it's probably not your patients that would turn you in it's more likely going to be a competitor that's watching you closely and identifying or alerting any one of those organizations that I just mentioned. Because what's at stake is, well, potentially your medical license, your success in online marketing, or hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines. Now, why would anybody take risks so severe? And the reality is usually because they just don't understand the guidelines that are set forward as it relates to online marketing and uh, online reputation in the medical arena. So let's take a quick look here. The reason as well is that we're all concerned with looking as good as possible online because we know we know that patients are searching our business name plus the word reviews. Uh, just for giggles, go ahead and type in your practice name in the Google search bar and often what you'll see is it auto or, or your physician names, it auto completes with the review word reviews right afterwards. That's telling us that that's a popular search for patients inside our market. And what we see when that happens are things like this. We see the aggregation of different sites that are rating and reviewing your practice or your doctors showing up right there on Google's first page. Now what you'll notice is many of those sites today include star ratings next to their listings. I've highlighted examples here from Real Patient Ratings and Yelp. Right? And so we know that those star listings are attractive, they visually catch our eye, and for many clinics today, they want to see star listings not just from those third-party websites, but on their own websites as well. Now, in pursuit of all of those things, if we're not aware what the rules and the regulations are, there's a chance that we put our practice or our physician's medical license at risk. So here are the three things that we want you to take away today. It's just cautionary tales about how to do online reputation right and do it in a way that's safe for you and for all of your providers. The first thing you have to understand is that it's illegal to compensate patients for reviews. So if you're advertising that patients get uh, free treatment, a gift certificate, or a discount, that's compensation and it runs afoul of FTC, FTC guidelines unless those patients clearly disclose that they were compensated for the reviews. This isn't just for celebrity endorsements. In addition to that, every state medical licensing board has codes in place that govern false fraudulent and misleading communications. If there's the risk that you might deceive a patient, uh, a common example of this might be telling the members of your staff that they need to write reviews when they receive free services from the clinic as a part of their employment without them disclosing that they're staff members, right? And in that case, we may mis be misleading a patient who needs to know all the material facts about the person who's writing that review. And finally, we need to um, avoid two practices that Google really doesn't like. And in fact, they have published guidelines that prohibit these things. One's called review gating. And it's, well, it's just what it sounds like. When we ask patients, hey, were you happy? Oftentimes it's when they um, complete a satisfaction survey. And if they say they're satisfied, you then in turn steer them to one of the major review sites to leave a review. And if they say they're dissatisfied, you shunt them into some other uh, vehicle for communication with the practice. That's called review gating. And sites like uh, Google and uh, Yelp will actually remove your reviews if they catch you engaged in this practice. As well, there's this thing called aggregate rating. It's a little bit of code and it's the thing that allowed us to see star ratings next to a clinic's own website. Now, the way that aggregate work rating works today, we have some uh, guidelines there on the screen for you to follow. Ideally, Google says they want the reviews used to calculate your own aggregate rating, the value and the number of stars that you broadcast on your own website, should be based on reviews that you collect yourself, not aggregated from other third-party websites. And it needs to be, all the details need to be clearly accessible uh, and evident to the consumer. Right? And so there are clear policies and guidelines that you can use to do these things right. Because at the end of the day, what we have to step back and think is, are we really willing to be called to task by a competitor? 
right? It's not gonna be the patients who are gonna turn you in for these violations. It's very likely to be competing practices in your market who are watching to make sure that you're playing fair. So all that said, if you have any questions about this or other topics for online marketing or medical practice, we invite you to send us an email or visit us online.